Utility that operates Japan's damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant has been hit with yet another big bill. Tokyo Electric Power Company's insurance policy runs out Sunday. That means TEPCO had to hand over a $1.5 billion deposit to the government. Utilities operating nuclear plants in Japan are legally required to be insured for 120 billion yen to compensate for any accidents. TEPCO is losing its coverage from the Japan Atomic Energy Insurance Pool. 23 non-life insurers established the organization. The group decided last August it would not renew the company's contract. The utility deposited the funds Friday with the Tokyo Legal Affairs Bureau. The Science and Technology Ministry says the payment is the first of its kind by a power company. TEPCO spokespeople say the utility is still seeking coverage from private sector insurers. In other news, a group of Tokyo Electric Power Company shareholders plans to file a lawsuit against a number of the utility's current and former executives as early as late January over the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear crisis. Last November, 42 shareholders asked the company's auditors to file a lawsuit against 60 people who have held executive posts. The shareholders believe that the executives were negligent and are seeking a total of 5.5 trillion yen or more than $70 billion in compensation. On Monday, TEPCO notified the shareholders in writing that it will not cooperate in taking legal action against the executives. The utility argues that the scale of the March tsunami was unforeseeable, so the executives cannot be responsible for the nuclear disaster. A lawyer representing the shareholders criticized TEPCO auditors for claiming that tsunami could not be predicted and for expressing no remorse. A special panel investigating the Fukushima nuclear accident has questioned former Prime Minister Naoto Khan. It was Khan's first time to testify on the subject even though government and diet panels have held similar hearings. The Independent Investigation Commission of the Fukushima nuclear accident held a closed-door session on Saturday and heard details of how the Khan administration handled the crisis. The former Prime Minister was quoted as saying that everyone in Japan was too obsessed with the myth of nuclear power safety. Khan encouraged the Commission's work. He said it's meaningful that different groups, including civic ones, are investigating the accident. The hearings shed light on how politicians tried to tackle the nuclear crisis, even though they were skeptical about the functions of political organizations and their management systems. This will be helpful for us to consider the function of the Prime Minister's office. The Commission intends to interview other ministers and release its final report at the end of February. Japan hopes to conclude an agreement with Ukraine to cooperate on nuclear accidents. Residents of the former Soviet Republic are still struggling to recover from the disaster in 1986 in Chernobyl. The Japanese government would share information about nuclear accidents with Ukraine. The severity of the Chernobyl accident was ranked 7, the highest level. The effects still pose a serious threat in Ukraine. Vast areas remain contaminated with radioactive materials. Japanese experts also evaluated the Fukushima nuclear accident last March as a 7. The two sides would share information about health problems and tainted soil from the spread of radioactive substances. They would also have nuclear experts study the impact of the accidents. It would be the first deal of its kind for Japan. Officials in Fukushima Prefecture say they have detected high levels of radiation in a newly completed residential building. They say materials used in construction may have been contaminated with radioactive cesium from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The three-story apartment building in Nihonmatsu City was completed last July. Twelve of the units currently are being rented. The city found that levels of radioactivity on the first floor were up to 1.24 microsieverts per hour, well above background radiation levels. Radiation levels on the second and third floors were much lower. I'm shocked. I don't feel safe living here. It's better to move out, but honestly, I feel so lost. 
The discovery came after the city's regular checkups found that children living there had been exposed to more radiation than other children over a three-month period. The officials say that the gravel used on the first floor came from a stone crushing site in Namie Town in the no-entry zone near the crippled plant. Authorities will confirm the cause of the contamination and check if gravel from the same site has been used elsewhere. Japan's industry ministry, industry ministry says it didn't foresee such high levels of radiation in shale. It admits it has set no radiation standards for gravel shipments from areas affected by the accident at Fukushima. The ministry says the high levels of contamination were unexpected because the stones were not extracted just from the surface of the mountain. The quarry reportedly shipped gravel to about 20 construction and concrete firms between late March and late April, around the time the town of Namie was designated as an evacuation zone. Professor Hideo Yamazaki of Kinki University, who specializes in radioactive materials, says the lack of crisis management is to blame for the latest development. Cases like this wouldn't happen if the government had inspected construction materials earlier. The government should set standards as soon as possible. High levels of radioactive cesium have been detected in a new apartment building in Fukushima Prefecture. The source is more, uh, most likely gravel taken from the no-entry zone near the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Industry ministry officials are checking if gravel from the site was used elsewhere. The three-story apartment building in Nihonmatsu City was completed last July. Twelve units currently rented. The city detected levels of radioactivity on the first floor at up to 1.24 microsieverts per hour, well above the radiation level of the surrounding area. It's better to move out, but honestly, I feel so lost. I'm shocked. I don't feel safe living here. The discovery came after regular ch uh, city checkups found that kids in the building have been exposed to more radiation than other children over a three-month period. City spokespersons say gravel used to build the first floor came from uh, a quarry in Namie's town of the no-entry zone near the Kripo plant. The industry ministry found that the gravel from the quarry was shipped to 200 construction firms. Shipments were completed before the area was made a no-go zone, but some gravel was left out in the open after the nuclear accident. The ministry is also checking other firms as there are six quarries in the no-entry zone. We didn't know why the radiation was so high. It didn't change even when we cleaned the floor. We had no idea what was going on. We were stunned. The firm was uh, given no information on the spread of radiation from the government. It had no idea its gravel would be contaminated. Tokyo Electric Power Company has submitted the results of stress tests on two nuclear reactors along the Sea of Japan coast. The company says the reactors can withstand an earthquake 1.3 times stronger than they were designed to. TEPCO on Monday gave the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency the result of tests on the number one and number seven reactors at the Kashiwazaki Kariwa nuclear power plant in Niigata Prefecture. The tests are preconditioned for restarting the reactors. TEPCO claims the reactors could endure a tsunami of up to 15 meters, nearly five times higher than the safety standard set by the company. We consider the two reactors more than safe enough. We want to explain the results to local residents and authorities. We also want to consult with them about how to proceed. Niigata Governor Hirohiko Izumida says it's still too early to decide whether to restart the reactors. Doing stress tests is better than nothing. Of course, TEPCO has to factor in what really happened at Fukushima Daiichi. Otherwise, what's the point in having this kind of computer simulation? Japan's utilities have submitted stress test results for 14 reactors. That's nearly 30% of the reactors that have been shut down for inspections. 
Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda has warned opposition parties not to oppose an increase in consumption tax. Noda was speaking at the ruling Democratic Party's annual convention on Monday. Noda expressed his determination to carry out a unified reform of social security and taxation. But the ruling coalition lacks an upper house majority, so securing the opposition bloc's cooperation will be essential. If the opposition kills the bill to raise consumption tax, what will happen? It might be a good idea to send the bill to the upper house anyway and let them think about the alternatives. Noda said broad administrative reforms are precondition for the tax increase. He said lawmakers must make sacrifices and vow to reduce the number of diet seats and cut government salaries. Japan's nuclear crisis minister Goshi Hosono has pledged to enhance the international effort to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons through a new government agency scheduled to be launched in April. Hosono visited Japan Atomic Energy Agency facilities in Tokai Village in Ibaraki Prefecture on Saturday. There he observed researchers check if nuclear materials are only being used for peaceful purposes. Concern over nuclear proliferation is increasing with developments in North Korea and Iran. It is about time to consider how Japan should deal with these proliferation issues. Hosono said non-proliferation will be an important theme for the new nuclear safety agency. The agency is to start work in a few months with an annual budget of nearly $650 million. His remarks are taken as indicating that Japan will do more in the effort for non-proliferation with a major role to be played by the forthcoming agency. Demonstrators have taken to the streets near the oldest nuclear plant in France. They're demanding the government shut down the 34-year-old facility immediately. About 300 people gathered for the rally in the town of Fessenheim. French, Swiss and German protesters took part. They held up signs saying an accident like the one at Fukushima Daiichi should never happen again. This nuclear plant is getting too old. It must be shut down. French nuclear authorities are asking the plant's operator to reinforce the structure of the reactor. The safety of aging reactors is one of the major issues in the French presidential election in April. The response you're seeing in Japan, it makes me think about the disaster response to 9-11. Just look at how quickly they started hauling debris away. And that's the sort of reaction that needs to be happening in Japan. And it's, it's late. It's late. That reaction should have happened long ago. That island should have been... How do you evacuate an island that size, though? What's the population of Japan? Okay, I don't have figures on that. I got other points. Um, in a way, this whole thing is... Uh, info war victory? Is it a concession to truthers? Is it possible that so many people are feeling so vindicated right now that they're going to ignore the issue of what the hell to do about this problem? Um, you know, if the info war is about transparency and and communication of what's going on then you know false flag a little a little two month delay on cluing the world in on what the hell has happened in Japan um, I used to be a pacifist uh, this whole thing has got me questioning that because uh, I've come up with a new torture I I have invented waterboarding with radioactive salt water. Hey, what do you think? Um, I don't know, is it too early in all this to, to say whose ass needs kicking? Um, it's practically genocide, okay, on the entire human race, and it makes me wonder if Japan is alien, or 
what the hell is it about them that makes them think that they can survive this kind of disaster?